Hi guys, this is Esoteric Tech and my name is Gerald Parker. It's been a while, it's been a long while, but it's not because I've forgotten about you, trust me. It's because I've been incredibly busy. And I'm gonna tell you more about that later, but for now, I wanna tell you all the reasons why Go is still an amazing language to learn in 2022. So let's get started. Before we get into all the things this video is about, let's talk about what this video isn't. It's not titled, Why You Shouldn't Learn Python, or 101 Reasons Not to Learn Java. It's about the opportunities available for anyone who's willing to learn the Go programming language. So before you become offended and send me a message with 102 reasons to learn Rust, ask yourself, what is he really saying here? In fact, if any developer or a YouTuber ever tells you that any language is the best and it's the only one you should learn, I've got a secret for you. I've been fortunate enough to work with Python, c -sharp, Java, JavaScript, which I'm not that big of a fan of, but that's for another time, Go, and a couple of other scripting languages. They're all great. They all have their pros and cons. Now, I won't lie, I do like some of the features and benefits of Go, but more than anything, I've been able to take advantage of opportunities and create opportunities for others that revolve heavily around Go. If you don't know anything about me, I started my career as a self-taught developer by building this football machine and a couple of other projects. Since then, I've worked for Siemens and Cisco, and I'm currently working as a full-time developer for an incredible fintech startup known as Sintera. In addition, I'm currently the director of software for an up-and-coming tech school known as Pivot Technology School. I'm going to talk more about both of those later and how those directly relate to my experiences with Go. If Go is completely foreign to you, I encourage you to watch this video and gain some context. In this video, I discuss what Go is, how it came about, and how you can evaluate whether or not you should learn Go or any other programming language. I talk about three sets of criteria that you can use to measure. Those criteria are features, the community or state of the language, and the opportunities that it can create for you. So rather than talk about those exact same points in this video, I wanna talk about what happened with Go in 2021 that shows that it's still meeting those requirements. And for features, we go to the web. Regardless of your experience with the programming language, the best place to go for all things Go, no pun intended, is the primary Go development website. For those of you who have visited this site before, you may remember that it used to be golane.org. They've not only changed the URL, but they've made some vast improvements to the website. It's now go.dev. And on the main page, we've got a list of companies who are using Go. And I'd say these are some pretty notable companies. We've got a section entitled Why Go, which provides us with some case studies and use cases. We've got a resource section for anyone who's looking to get started, a docs and packages section, a playground for anyone who wants to experiment with the language, and then we've got our blog section, and that's where we're gonna check out our features. Now, I should say, if you're interested in all of the nitty gritty details and features of each release, you'd have better luck checking out the release notes for each version, but if you're only interested in the most important news and features, this blog is your best bet. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to the very first post of 2021, which was on January 12th, right here. And we see that there was a proposal for adding generics to Go. Now I'm gonna talk more about generics in a second, but let me just say this was an exciting proposal. In fact, I know at least a couple individuals who told me they didn't like Go because it didn't have generics. But we see that they have some security releases, some improvements to a VS Code extension, and then in February, 1.16 was released. So let's take a look at that. Here we see they added some additional support for embedded files in the Mac operating system. But what I wanna draw your attention to is this paragraph right here. It talks about the requirement of Go modules with the 1.16 version. Now, adding Go modules was nice, but the cool part is they didn't add it until they evaluated the results of the 2020 Go developer survey. Think about that for a second. The Go team is actively evaluating and listening to the feedback given on the Go developer survey. 
That means that you, as a Go developer, can have a say in what goes on in the programming language. Now that's dope. And that's exactly what you would expect from an open source programming language. Let's look at some of the other updates. It's important to note that not all of these are feature releases. Some of these are just articles on Go related topics. But we see that in August, they released 1.17. They included some improvements for working with pointers and slices, and they improved the crypto library because, well, why not? Everyone's hopping on the crypto bandwagon, so it's nice to see that they're keeping up with the trends. We've got a few more articles and releases, and improvements to the search functionality of the website, an article celebrating 12 years of Go, and then, not even one month ago, they released version 1.18 beta, which now has generics. Keep in mind, this proposal was just at the beginning of the year. So let's talk about generics. Without getting too technical, it's important to know that generics adds flexibility to your code. For example, imagine that you are an avid Crayola fan and you decide one day you want to build a crayon sorting robot, or a robot that sorts your crayons by colors. Right? It's, it's, an, it's a ridiculous analogy, but <laughs> it, it's the one that came to mind. So you build this robot, you have a nicely organized set of crayons, and then one day you open your sock drawer and you say, huh, I'd like to build a sock sorting robot that also sorts my socks by colors. Without generics, you'd have to build a robot for crayons, a robot for socks. But with generics, you can just build one robot, one sorting robot that sorts things by colors. You turn it on and you just give it a set of items to sort. That is the benefit and the beauty of generics. It allows you to write code in a more generalized and broad way. And if done properly, that translates into less code. So there's no question, the feature I'm most excited about is generics. But hopefully what you just learned was that they are consistently adding new features to the Go programming language, and they're doing it with the input of the Go community. Which leads me to my next point. How did the state of the Go community look in 2021? Let's take a look. Here we are back on the main web page, and if you take the time to go through this content, you'll find that much of it is focused around creating awareness and engagement. Back in the section on companies using Go, not only does it show you each company, but you can click on each to learn more about how each company is using Go, which is a nice way to learn about the features as well. Back on the main web page, if you scroll down, you'll find a section on upcoming events. It's nice to see that there are plenty of events and they're happening all around the world. You've got a resources and training section, which is always a nice sign of an active community. And then back on the blog link, if you scroll down, you'll see a post on the Go Collective on Stack Overflow. You can think of collectives as groups within Stack Overflow, and they're really just a way to find out answers faster, engage with experts, and share knowledge. Once again, they started this collective with the input they received on the Go user survey. And I'm excited to see what this develops into. Now, there's been a few times that I've brought up this Go developer survey. Unfortunately, the results of the 2021 survey aren't yet available. However, what we can look at are the results of the 2021 JetBrains survey, which I referenced in my video from last year. Last year, I discussed the results of the 2020 developer survey and we saw some promising statistics for Go. This year is no different. So I'm not gonna go through all of the same numbers that I went through previously, However, it's worth taking a look at the key takeaways. A few important key takeaways relating to Go are these three here. Go is one of the top five languages developers are planning to adopt. It's one of the top five that developers were learning in 2021, and it remains one of the top five growing languages. If you're wondering whether or not Go's popularity is on the rise, I say these are some pretty good indicators. So what about opportunities? Are there still opportunities for you to become a Go developer in 2022? If you're still wondering that, if you're still questioning that, let me answer that for you. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. There's no question about it. There are more opportunities than you know. I once read an article that said, the internet is a gold mine, developers are the shovels, and right now there's not enough of them to go around. That's still true today. 
Is it going to be easy? No, absolutely not. It's going to be challenging. But that means it's that much more rewarding. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I work in a completely separate industry. How could I ever make that transition? Earlier, I mentioned that I work for a fintech company called Sinterra. Prior to me joining, they started a program that took in a group of students, some of which had experience in the finance industry, but no software development experience. They trained them, gave them the technical skills and soft skills to become a developer, and I must say, I think they did an amazing job. I work with these people today, and they're great. I'm not sure when the next cohort for Sinterra will be, but the good news is Sinterra isn't the only company looking for individuals who have knowledge in a certain industry, but may not have software development experience. I also mentioned that I'm the director of software for Pivot Technology School. But prior to December, I wasn't the director, I was an instructor for a five-month back-end development course, which was held in partnership with the grocery delivery startup, Shipped. We took in a group of students that had little to no programming experience. And similar to the program at Sinterra, we gave them the soft skills and technical skills to become developers, and by the end of five months, they applied for positions at Shipped and received offers, with some of them even receiving offers from other companies. And if you ask me what programming language I taught them, you know what it was. <laughs> and it wasn't because I chose to teach them that. Go was the programming language that Shipped wanted from their entry-level developers. If you're looking for a place to start, subscribe to this channel. Aside from my primary job, my passion is to help others transition into software. The worst that can happen is you find out it's not for you. So I would say go for it. <laughs> Pun intended. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video on Esoteric Tech.